What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and I have a super unique one for you today. Uh, as a lot of you probably know, Halo Infinite uh, early released their multiplayer recently this past week marking the 20th anniversary of Halo. And if you're like me, you probably grew up playing these games. So you know on this channel we do typically Python and other software tutorial series. We've done apps, we've done widgets, and we've done just base Python programming as well as a few games. And I thought what would be super fun in honor of the Halo release as if we did a little bit of a uh, Halo kind of Space Invaders style game. I'm going to start every video in the series by kind of demoing the game so that you guys see what the end goal is and hopefully think that that's something worth building to. So I'm going to demo the game that we built here a little bit and I am pretty proud of it. You can hear just kind of the epic soundtrack in the background. I've, I've left instructions for how to play and said, you know, click anywhere to begin. So. Let's get into it. We've got a little, uh, some soundtrack playing in the background. I've got some sound effects. The enemies in each wave are uh, automatically spawned in and they kind of randomly pick heights to spawn in from and I've set them up with a specific speed to come in at. And I've added some impact sound effects that maybe aren't the greatest. Um, I've also made it to where each wave increases the number of enemies so you can see we're on level two now and we should have more enemies i got these little uh 8-bit halo icons from the internet um and in the series in the actual tutorials i'll talk through kind of how to grab images how to scale them all to the size that you want um, as well as there's a free tool on the internet for removing the background from images so if you've dealt with kind of the super annoying like you pull in an image you want to use and you have that like white rectangle around it no worries uh, we'll go over how to do that too game over all right so there we go so that's the game demo and whatever stage of the project you're at and following along with uh, hope you're enjoying it be sure to leave a like on the channel a subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying it and uh, good luck with your code all right, so for part three in our Halo Space Invaders uh, Python Pi game tutorial series here, we're gonna be taking a look at adding the enemies to the screen. So we've already created the player who can be controlled with the WASD uh, four arrows. And right now, nothing happens because the enemies don't spawn in, they don't come across the screen or anything. So what we need to do next is we actually need to take this class of character, and just like we created a specific class for the player before, we're going to be creating a class for the enemy. Which again, uh, since we created the character to be fairly generic as a parent class, we can do a lot of the same inheriting that we did as the player. You do need to spell it right. It's always kind of my Achilles heel. But um, what we can do, just like when we did the player class, I'm actually going to copy this, we can pull in the super for the init function. Um, and so just like before, we're doing that. But what's different now is we'll be using a different um, image and a different shot. So I, create, I, I got the images for three different 8-bit Halo enemies. I got an elite with a sword, an elite with a gun, and I got a little grunt. Um, so I like all three of these images. I thought it'd be fun to have those as the enemies. You can certainly pull in more. You can make your own, however you want to do that. But let's go ahead and... Uh, create those so just like before we're gonna have to give them um, we're gonna have to load their images in and we're gonna have to scale them down so we need uh, I called them I'm actually just gonna pull them in here uh, but I called them grunt elite with a sword and elite with a gun um, and then I gave them these scalings I wanted the grunt to be a little bit smaller than the elites but these are the images for the three of them. And then uh, I want to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to give the three different uh, characters, different colored lasers. But um, I just, they're, they're little rectangular uh, projectiles. And so um, that's what pixel laser blue, pixel laser green, pixel laser red are. So I called those red laser, blue laser, and green laser. And I'm going to copy those in here too as well. 
Uh, you can see this first one, I put the rotate function on. We are gonna need to do that to all of the uh, images, all of the lasers, because they all came in uh, as vertical rectangles. And so if you use this rotate, it's just like the scale function. It just manip manipulates your image and uh, it's gonna turn them 90. And that's what we wanna do with the bullet as well, except, whoops, except with the bullet, we actually need to transform that one 270 degrees. It's not just a rectangle, it has a point uh, and a butt, you know, it has a tip and a, a rear end. And so we need to turn it 270 or you can turn it negative 90 in Pi game. Those are the same thing. Hopefully you're familiar with the fact a circle is 360 degrees. And that's what we're giving it here as a value of rotation in degrees okay so we pulled in the three different laser colors we pulled in the three different images now in our enemy class what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a dictionary here of the different units what we're going to call them and then we're going to point them to a few things so the first one we'll say is going to be called grunt and for a grunt we're going to uh, give it two variables in a tuple over here we're going to say use the image grunt and then since our grunt is red we're gonna give him the red laser. All right, and we're gonna copy this uh, kind of entry and we are gonna separate them by commas and a space. And then the second one will be sword. Yeah, that'll work. And then we called that guy elite underscore sword. And we gave him the blue laser and there we go and let's do that one more time and we called this guy the gunner because it's an elite with a gun you can <laughs> name them whatever you want so if you don't like my naming convention move on with your day uh so elite gun and then we gave him finally the green laser so what we did here is we just made a dictionary of the three enemies that we're gonna allow the game to choose from and i like the idea of having a procedurally generated kind of randomized waves of enemies um get the formatting right and so that's all that was is a dictionary where now we can just call grunt sword or gunner and that's going to decide whether they should have um, you know which image and then what color projectile they're going to shoot you can also use that if you want to to give them different properties like you can give them different speeds based on this dictionary you could give them different healths based on this dictionary so um, really use that as a as a stepping off point to make it your own but the reason I think it's so useful is uh, now when we create an instance of enemy we're gonna have one more variable that we'll call unit right because it's deciding between the three and we're going to call this dictionary units <clears throat> so we'll say okay create a grunt create a sword elite create a gunner whatever um, and we pass that in as a variable and then all we have to say for self.image and self.shot is going to be equal to whatever its lookup in the units uh, dictionary is for that unit. So uh, again, this requires a little bit of knowledge of Python's um, dictionary and lookup uh, style of functions. There are tutorials on the channel if you need that. And then the self.mask is gonna be just the same as it was for the player. And then for the move, the movement for these guys is gonna be really simple because wherever they get generated, we just want them to move from the right of the screen to the left of the screen, right? So it's just self.x minus equals speed. And you don't need self twice. Okay, so essentially wherever they spawn in, we're also gonna give them a speed just like the player has a speed. And we're gonna say just move at a constant speed from the right of the screen to the left of the screen. So that's cool. We've modified the class of character to include some special functionality for the enemy, but now we actually need to generate our enemies. And so this is where um, the, uh, the level and the lives are going to come into play a little bit because the level is going to determine um, how many enemies. And we're actually going to step this down to zero because we're going to use seeing that there are no enemies left as what increments the game. So when the game starts, we're gonna have this uh, empty empty list for enemies. And uh, 
it's going to that's how we're going to increment the level and also spawn a new wave of enemies is when the dictionary is empty when the list is empty because every time an enemy either gets shot or hits the left edge of your screen that's when we're going to delete that enemy out of the list and so starting with an empty list on level zero is how we'll kind of begin the game and then let's give the enemy some speed i'm going to say three uh that's gonna be fairly fast but for this stage of the game it's actually more useful to just get them moving across the screen until we've put the like shooting and collision detection in because that's when we might want to slow it down and actually test that part of the game but for now we're just trying to make sure they get populated on screen uh, appropriately and then this is not wave speed this is wave size but uh, let's say that we want every level of the game to spawn five more enemies than the previous wave. You can do whatever number you want. Maybe five feels too easy for you. You could double it to 10. Those are fun little ways to uh, tweak it to make this game your own. And so now we're going to come down into our uh, draw. And um, again, we made the enemies a, a list of enemies. So what we're going to say is for enemy in our list of enemies again spelling is hard um, we're gonna do just like we did with the player pi game dot draw or uh, not pi game enemy dot draw and we're gonna put it on the window okay so uh, this is great except enemies is an empty list right so where are we actually creating them and that's what we're gonna do inside of the running uh, logic. So down here above our checking for quit and checking for keys and under update window, we're going to say if length of enemies is equal to zero, right? So this is where we're checking to see if every enemy who was in your game has been uh, deleted or destroyed, shot, gone off screen, whatever you want to say. But that's when we're going to increment the level. That's when we're going to increase the wave size. And uh, that's also when we're going to for, <clears throat> excuse me, for I in range of wave size, we're going to say enemy equals, and now we're going to make a class. So here we're, we're using the or, uh, an, an instance of a class. Um, so here we're saying the enemy is going to be equal to, and this is the first instance of like randomly generated uh, enemies, but we're saying in a random range that is going to be their starting X coordinate. So think about the generation of these characters. If they're moving from the right to the left, we want them all to spawn off screen from just a little bit off screen to quite a bit off screen and that's how you get like a wave effect if you want to do this um, as a vertical space invader style shooter i think horizontal makes a little more sense for halo but if you want to do a traditional space invader type shooter just change the variable that's um, them spawning in from the x's that we're going off screen in to the y's but then also make sure to change their movement from uh, a decrement in the y to uh from x to the y so for uh enemy random range and then we give it a range of two variables uh the starting one will be width plus 100 and then the second one will say width plus 1000 so that gives them a range of 900 pixels all off screen to the right that they could spawn in on but that's sweet because then they're going to be crawling across the screen to the left and then we actually don't want that second one there. We're giving it, that's the X coordinate. And then for the Y coordinate, it's going to be random dot rand range, just like before. Only now we'll go 100 so it can't be pressed right up against the top of the screen. And then we'll say height minus 100 so it can't be pressed right up against the bottom of the screen. So we're giving it here an X coordinate of off screen to the right and then a Y coordinate of somewhere in our visual um, part of the screen but then we're also going to use uh, another piece of random which is called choice and we're going to make it decide what the unit is going to be so if you remember when we were setting up the uh, enemy subclass of character we also said you're going to be getting a parameter which will be a unit um, inside here and so now we give it a list of what it's choosing between and it's grunt sword 
and gunner and so make sure whatever you named your uh, dictionary entries whatever you made the keys in your dictionary that's what you give it right here um, and you're telling it those are its options as choice so we're gonna split this out into a few lines because that's just getting a little hectic to read and you can see right here the three things we're uh, giving our every enemy is going to be um, starting somewhere off screen to the right somewhere from top to bottom on the screen and then it's going to be one of the three enemies we defined and so we need the last thing to add this to our list of enemies so um, again enemy is a single item enemies is where we're keeping track of all of them and so uh, as we go through and use this for loop to create all of them we need to add it to the list and so that should do it for creating our enemies once the list is empty, which again happens at the very beginning of the game. Didn't mean to put a break point in there. And then I believe what we need to do, the last thing to get these guys moving across the screen, will be say for enemy in enemies. And for enemy in enemies, we want the enemy to move at enemy speed so we already defined enemy speed and now I believe that's all we need when we run this they should spawn off screen to the right and move from right to left they're probably gonna move pretty fast here let's take a look so level increment yeah you can see they're moving pretty fast this would be a tricky game but since we don't have the shooting or collision detection in place yet I just want everyone to see that um, we did spawn a wave of enemies that were randomly generated. And if we stop it and run it again, they're going to spawn in different locations. So let's see here. Yeah, and we got a lot more sword elites that time and uh, less grunts and gunner elites. And that's okay. That's the point of like random generation to your game. You can set this up as a for loop to create like a row of grunts, a row of sword elites, a row of gunner elites, and, and look a lot more like a, a designed version of the game, not so randomly generated. Your call, that's a fun way to customize it. But that's going to do it for this part of the video. In the next part of the video, we'll set up, um, I think, the shooting mechanism. We'll start pretty soon with the uh, deleting of enemies if they either get shot, if they collide with the player, or if they go off screen to the left, which will lead to levels being incremented, the wave size increasing, and things like that. So we're getting pretty far into this game. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If you are, as always, I appreciate a like on the channel. Uh, a like on the video subscribe to the channel and uh, let me know with anything i missed anything you did differently or anything you want to see in the future in the comments below and as always good luck with your code and thanks for watching thanks bye